not to say um a gazillion times as it was pointed out to me on my previous video that that is very annoying. So I've come a little more prepared and I will try to do this without saying that word at all. We're very minimal. <laughs> so we've had our Intex spa for about five months. Uh, we've not had, see I just said it. Did you hear me? I just said it. Oh my word. I have such a problem with saying that word. If you have the same problem, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's such a bad habit. We've not had any problems with this spa. The only, I guess you could say, problem that we had was on the control panel there. It gave us an error message. It wasn't working. Come to find out, it was our outlet. We had flipped a breaker or something. We got that fixed and it was no problem. So nothing that was wrong with the actual hot tub. So come over here. If you can see right there where it says C, underneath that is one of the filters. Over here is another filter. There's two of them. And then right above that filter is where the water, the hot water comes in. We have not had to replace these filters yet. We have cleaned them out a few times. We just use our water hose sprayer and spray them out real good and that has worked great. However, we're fixing to get into the cooler months. We're probably going to be using the hot tub more often, so I'm sure we'll probably replace them pretty soon. That is our chlorine floater that came with the hot tub. We just use one inch chlorine tablets, just put one in there, and one is good for, gosh, like a week or two at least. So this has been very low maintenance for us, especially through the summer. We've not had to use a whole lot of chemicals. It may be different in the cool months when we're using it more often. I'll probably do another update whenever we've used it through some cooler months and see if we've had to use a lot more chemicals or anything like that. Speaking of cooler months, this also comes with this thermal ground cover here, which they recommend that you set this on a hard surface like a patio or a deck or something. It says not to set it on the ground. I'm going to say maybe that's just because you know the ground can give some, it's not necessarily level. It might still be okay if that's the only place you had to put it. But it does come with this ground cover. It's supposed to keep the cool temperatures from coming up through the bottom and cooling your water off. So this over here is the cover for it. Um, it's inflatable. It's not as durable as the side of the pool. I'm sorry, the side of the hot tub. We have a pool over here also. That's what I was thinking about. Uh, the side of the hot tub is very, very durable. Me and my husband can both sit on it and it's, it's so durable. Like you wouldn't think something inflatable could be that durable, but it is. The cover, however, is like a regular, it's kind of like a regular uh, flotation device. Like if you've got something to float on in your pool, it's the same kind of material. So, you know, it doesn't have to be as durable. To inflate these, the pump area right here, the cover of this on the front side uh, completely comes off and you actually use the pump to inflate both the hot tub and the cover. If you can see all along the bottom here, it's really sunny, I don't know how well you can see it. You can see all the little holes along the bottom. That's where the air comes out to make the bubbles. I will go ahead and turn the bubbles on for you, show you the control panel here real quick. I said focus. My camera is not wanting to focus. There we go. I don't know if you can really see the temperature on there. I think ours right now is 104. It was 103 earlier. That's and the heater's not on. Like if you see this green flame, that means the heater's not on when it's red. That's when it's on. It's just heated up because it's so hot. It's really hot here in Texas. And so that's what that means. You can I mean, if I wanted to turn the heater on, I can hit that button there and you see, I don't know if you can really see, no, I, that just turned it off. So I guess, oh, that's why, because it's already up to temp. 104 is the hottest temperature you can get it at. So of course, power button, these are to control your temperature up or down. Uh, this is your filter button, which if you hit that, that's going to shut the pump off, which you don't want to do that unless you're unless it's empty obviously which then you're just gonna have the whole thing unplugged but it's gonna get really nasty if you don't run the filters and then here's your bubbles 
Uh, of course, that was the heater, and then you can just toggle between Celsius and Fahrenheit. So I'll go ahead and turn the bubbles on so you can see. So the bubbles are kind of noisy, but they're very relaxing. It's not like having a jet on a standard hot tub where you can sit in front of the jet and have it directed at a sore spot or something in your back. It's not like that, but the bubbles are very soothing and relaxing, so it's still very enjoyable. We're very much looking forward to getting in this once the weather cools off. So that is the hot tub let me go ahead and I'll just show you for those of you who didn't see my first video I don't have the cover on right now but this is the the latch that the hot tub goes down into this right here is a lock uh, it actually came with a little key and you stick it in there and you can turn it so that you can't push the sides in we don't really ever lock it we have a three-year-old and a seven-year-old and even my seven-year-old when it's unlocked she can't really squeeze us hard enough to get it open so it's not a concern of ours really and then there's these nice little handles here so when it's empty and you're trying to move it around it's very easy to carry there's one on the other side as well so I believe that's it for the actual hot tub I'm gonna go ahead and go inside and go through the chemicals and stuff that we use just if you're curious as to what kind of things you might need to purchase for this I'll show you what we've used and what's worked best for us also, we've got this pool over here, I believe, it is, no, it is not Intex brand, it's Summer Escapes brand. Intex has one similar to it, but this one was cheaper. If you would like for me to do a product review on that, let me know, give me a thumbs up or a comment below, and I can do a product review on that as well, and please excuse my messy yard, I have children. <laughs> so I'm going to go inside now and go ahead and go over the chemical. All right, so here are the chemicals that we use. <clears throat> I apologize if you can hear my son's TV in the background. He's watching something and eating lunch, so I apologize for that. So I don't have the chlorine right now. We are out of it, but the chlorine comes in this same size container here, uh, except for it's orange like this, and it's not the HTH spa brand. It's just H HTH, and they're just... Um, one inch, they're yeah, probably about this big around. Um, they look like that. These are the shock tablets. The chlorine tablets look exactly the same. So I showed you what these tablets look like. They look exactly like the chlorine tablets. And like I said before, it just takes one of those little chlorine tablets in the floater and it lasts for like a week or two. And of course it's gonna depend on how much you're using it too. If you're using it, uh, very often, like several nights a week, you might need to add the chlorine more often. Um, or, if nothing else, if you, you could probably get away with using the chlorine just, you know, one every one or two weeks and then using this. We've only had to use this a couple of times. What this does is it cleans your pool without adding any extra chlorine. So this, the instructions on this actually say to take three of these tablets stick them in the center of your hot tub, turn the bubbles on and run it with the cover off for about 15 minutes and that will really clean your pool good. We usually, anytime we have shocked it, we have used this clarifier afterwards, which we've used this clarifier on its own before because we it hasn't really needed to be shocked but the water is getting a little cloudy and so we've used this. And basically, you know, all that does is makes your water clear again. So a lot of times after you shock it, it can become a little cloudy depending on how dirty it was before. So the clarifier is good to help restore that clarity to the water. The defoamer, we've used that quite a bit. I think this bottle is almost empty, yeah. Basically whenever I turn the bubbles on, you've probably seen a little bit of foam. Uh, a little bit of foam like that's fairly normal. It's not too much of a nuisance, but when we were using it a lot in the beginning, we had an overabundance of foam. So we put just, you know, like an ounce or something of that in there and it took the foam right away. Also, we bought this in the very beginning, the enzyme cleaner. 
the first couple of weeks we were using our hot tub like almost every night and we noticed on the chlorine floater that there was like a slimy like kind of a greasy film on it and it just really gross to me and I found this of all of these products I've gotten at Walmart also I'm sure you could probably go to your local pool supply store and find similar products as well I just find that these are the best value they work really well as far as I can tell um, but the enzyme cleaner I picked it out because it says quickly removes oils lotions and organics and I assumed that the film was because we had been in the hot tub like every night and of course we don't shower before we get in there that's just dumb <laughs> and I'm sure they would suggest that you do that but we don't do that so you know you've got your oils from your body that get in there and so when you're using that often you know it's something that you could put in there which we haven't used a whole lot of this you can tell we've still got quite a bit left in there so but that's just another good product that we found and then I don't know where I got these at. I have some other test strips that actually came with our, I think that came with our hot tub. I think these came from a friend. She gave us some chlorine and stuff that she didn't need anymore. And she also had these. But it's good to have some sort of test strips like this. You'll see on the back, and pretty much all these test strips are the same. They've got, they test for these different things, the pH, your chlorine, your alkalinity, and your, well, this one has stabilizer. I don't really know. My other one, it says calcium, like calcification on the bottom. So you basically dip it in there and then you just line it up with whatever color it shows to make sure your water is all balanced. And it'll show you like, you know, if it's between here and here, that's low. It's okay if it's here, if it's here, it's high. And based on that, you can figure out if you need to add additional chemicals or whatnot. So, and these just, the pop tops open. <laughs> the top pops open, not the pop tops open. And you can kind of see them down there. I don't know if I can see them now. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what they look like, and you just you dip them in the water and then I think this one it's a 15 second test so you actually are supposed to like let it sit there not in the water after you take it out of the water you're supposed to let it sit there for like 15 seconds and then you can compare them with the colors on the back so these are all of the products and everything that we use and like I said we get all of this stuff at Walmart we have a full supply store that's close by but it's way more expensive these are just better value I think this is like 13 13 or 14 dollars and it'll last us probably for a long time because we've not used how to use it much the chlorine tablets those are the same price they're like 13 to 14 dollars uh, for the same size container like this and which we've gone <laughs>